and welcome to today's segment of The Power of Money. I'm your host, Michelle Graves, nationally and internationally known as The Money Lady. And as always, it is my great joy, pleasure, and delight to bring you the very best of the best in the area of business, finance, and just relationships. And today I have, for the next hour, an a remarkable guest. And of course you always say, but Michelle, you always have remarkable guests. This is very true, but this woman that I'm going to be interviewing today is stellar in her industry, and in her field of expertise is in business image and business etiquette. That's right, she's the lady that's about protocol and uh, manners and all of the things that you need to know in a changing world system where, in my opinion, things have gotten much too casual. So I am going to introduce you to my guest, and uh, we're going to talk about business etiquette, emails, international protocol, dining, and just so many things that you need to be aware of today in your interactions with other people. Because trust me, it's not all about internet. At some point, you're going to deal with human beings. And that's where the distinctions are made. So without further ado, I'm going to introduce you to Leah Hawthorne, who is the president of ABI, Advanced Business Image and Etiquette. So how are you? Wonderful. How are you? Oh, I am just marvelous. And I'm so excited and delighted to have you as my guest today. And I want to introduce my audience to a little bit about you. Sure. And then we're going to get right into the substance of today's interview. Leah Hawthorne is a certified business image and business etiquette coach. She's the owner of ABI, Advanced Business Image and Etiquette, LLC. She's a training facilitator for the Defense Acquisition Universities, Senior College Fellowship, corporate business, college and universities, military installations, and is a master trainer for the Protocol School of Washington. Mm. Mm -hmm. Ms. Hawthorne <laughs> works to facilitate change in the business arena by improving individual and corporate image and business etiquette slash social intelligence skills. She trains businessmen and women all over the world, recently traveling to Dubai, training ga graduates of Zayed University in Abu Dhabi, training management teams at Ehedia Rail. There's so much more I could say about this woman because she's trained people all over the world from England, Cairo, London, uh, United Arab Republic, uh, Netherlands, Canada, Australia, on and on. But I'm not going to go any further into that, I'm going to get right into the meat of today's program and talk to her about herself. What got you into this business? What got me into this? My girlfriend uh, pulled me kicking and screaming into <laughs> it. How long ago? That oh my gosh, eight years ago? Okay. Because before I was doing that, I was a court transcriptionist. Okay. I was doing some high profile cases and I loved it. But she said, Leah, you have got to train for me at my school. She knew that I, I used to do theater, I used yes, to be on stage. Right, exactly. And she said, you know, Leah, and you've been in the business arena uh, image business uh, for 30 years. Oh, so, goodness gracious. Yes. That's a so, long time. Yes, it is. So I really want you to train for me. And uh, so I went to the class and I became certified through her and did start training for her. Uh, and I fell in love with it. My so goodness. So I came back home and started my own business here. I still train for her. Okay. Uh, but what I do is I, I take what I've learned at the Protocol School of Washington and uh, I'm certified, so I train what I've learned through them. So Here. you are the trainer of the trainer? Yes. That, oh my goodness, that's exciting. 
Have you seen a, a level of interest in business protocol and etiquette go up over the years? Have you seen that happening? Yes, yes. Okay. Um, many businesses and employers are looking for that cutting edge. Mm -hmm. And right now in this economy and the job searches that we're looking at right now, there might be 300 people for one job mm. who have the same resume yes. and the same qualifications. So what's going to get them that job? That cutting edge, that social intelligence, that protocol intelligence to be able to outclass that competition. I like that term, outclass <laughs> yes. the competition, Yes, because that really is what it is. What do you think that a person who has come up under your training um, ga gains that someone else would not have in an employability environment? They gain confidence and authority to be able to walk into a room and say, I paid a million dollars to be here and I got a bargain doing it. <laughs> That's what they get by learning what protocol intelligence is, what business etiquette is, and why it's important. Why they, is it important? It's important because it, it puts you, knowledge is power. Yes, it is. Applied knowledge is power. Applied knowledge is yes. power. It, it puts you at a higher level of intelligence to be able to know how to introduce someone in the mm -hmm. business arena. There's not a lot of people that might know exactly how to do that. So to be able to do that with confidence, people are going to know who are standing next to you. They did that in a really odd way. Now, <laughs> hmm, they know what they're doing. <laughs> Well, tell me how that works. How does one properly introduce an individual in a business setting? I mean, I do it all the time, but I would like to know if I'm doing it properly. I'm sure you are. Uh, precedence is uh, important. Okay. So let's pretend that you are the client. Okay. And I have my senior executive with me. The most important person in that room is the client, okay. always. So you want to say the client's name first. Okay. So I would say Michelle Graves. Okay. I would like to introduce to you John Jones. John Jones is the senior executive for our bank. I and Michelle Graves is one of our best clients. And then you both would shake hands. But I say your name first, first. and introduce to you, not you two. Ah. Because they are being introduced to you. Exactly. You don't reverse that precedence. That's significant. So in a networking environment, and, and I love networking, I love it, but I have seen it done so badly. <laughs> <laughs> like, oh my God, stop. Um, what, how does one break the ice in those kinds of settings? Well, you know, I'm going to be honest with you. Yes, 70, 75% of people don't like to network. Really? 75% of people get nervous huh. networking with people that they don't know. Okay. And that's what networking is. Right. I, I mean, if you're going to a family reunion, you know all of them. That's not networking. Uh, right. <laughs> but networking, uh, being in a room, in a social setting with people that you don't know. So you will see some faux pas, but if you know that going in, and you're one of those people that get nervous, and uh -huh. believe me, I used to be one of those people. Okay. Um, you can walk up to a group of people, stand there, wait for their eye contact, and they'll give it to you. They will give it to you. And ask them, may I join you? Oh, it's a request. What are they going to say? Uh, yeah, no, 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 no. Go away, 
Right, so you ask for permission. Yes, may I join you? And they hold out their hand and say, of course. That and is then so you introduce yourself to everyone. Oh my goodness. So you ask for permission yes. first. Yes, four easy words. For may I join you? Yes. Viewers, did you hear that? <laughs> for those of you that are networking, and that actually is how business is being done today. May I join you? That's good. And so the ice breaks. Now how do you disengage from that little cluster? At the point you've talked to everyone, exchanged cards, and shared familiarities. How you do you move on? Always close a conversation. Uh, don't say excuse me because you see something better over here. <laughs> I want to talk to this person because oh, they're no, really they, important. They're really important. <laughs> Next, yeah. Mm -hmm. Hold your hand out and say, say excuse me. Um, it is so nice to meet you and I would really like to see you again. And then do that with all three people Parties. that you've met. Uh -huh. And then excuse yourself. Wonderful. Always so there is that closure. Com yes, there close is that closure. Mm -hmm. Powerful. Without being offensive. Yes. So yes. eye contact? Uh, oh, yes. In the United States, eye contact is a very, very important. But not too much. Okay. How much is enough? Yes. Between 60 and 40 percent. Okay. You want to make sure that you're not making that person feel like they're under a microscope. Okay. So look down at their card, look at the other person in the uh -huh. group, but focus on that person or don't leave the group out. If there's three people, you want to make sure you're speaking with everyone. Everybody so the then you're going to have 60-40. But if it's one-on-one, mm -hmm. -on -one, you don't want too much. Contact. Uh, and you don't want too little because if you have too little, then you look not competent. No. <laughs> <laughs> You're right. Yes. Like creepy. Yes, a little creepy. <laughs> a little creepy. <laughs> They're kind of sneaky. Yeah. Yes. Yeah. Yes. Yeah. I think a lot of people um, are challenged in the area of eye contact. Yes. For me, it's essential that I connect, that I see the eyes. And I'm with people with dark glasses on or mm -hmm. people that will not um, make eye contact. I have a feeling that you have never had a problem <laughs> meeting a stranger. <laughs> I really haven't. I actually enjoy listening to people talk about their world. And I do. And that's so important. What you just said is listening. Listening to other people talk. Yes. And I'm not doing that right now because uh -huh. you're interviewing me. No, 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 I'm me, interviewing but, you. I want to hear about your world. But so many people don't listen. Hmm. They want to talk. I'd like to introduce t myself to you. I did this. I did this. I traveled here. I've done this. And then, great meeting you and leave. And it's happened before where... Did they even ask you what you, you did? You did. I, you feel or what like you do? Been, I can't explain what that feeling is like um, when you are encountering, I call them predator personalities, where they literally spot you, vamp, and just give their entire history. Mm -hmm. And all you do is, all you can see at the end of the conversation is, whoo we, that was a bit much, a bit much. But the counter to that is a person who you engage with who will not talk at all. Leah, what do you do <laughs> <laughs> And that might be their personality. They huh. might be thinking about something to say. Uh -huh. um, I, I knew someone from another culture that did that. Huh. And at, at that point, I wasn't training international protocol, so I wasn't sure why she wasn't speaking. Uh, she was Asian. Okay. And come to find out, I finally did ask her, and she said, well, I'm thinking. Huh. I'm thinking about what you're saying. And when she said something, it was important. I'm sure it was, because yes. she had processed your information. Yes. 
but you do run into people that just don't want to talk and all you can do is ask them open-ended questions ask them so where are you from why are you here Oh, that's what a do good you one. do? Where are you from? Let them talk. Okay. Make them talk. Give them the opportunity to tell their story. Mm -hmm. Would you say the cadence of the conversation is also important? Uh, if a person talks very fast, does that mean there's a lack of confidence, or what does that mean? Some people just talk fast. Uh, yeah, you're <laughs> right. You're right. Like, oh my God, would you slow down? <laughs> And that might be nerves. Mm -hmm. And once again, people who network, 75% of them have a little bit of nerves going into it. That That's why you so see people important. standing around the food. Yes, <laughs> right. They, they cluster around the food. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Or they hang around with people that they know. Okay, so they never, ever, ever branch into no. the area of interface. So what's the point? So what's, why are you here? <laughs> yes. Yeah, that becomes a real issue. Yes. Why, why are you here? Yes. But do you think most people uh, could break the ice if they could just recognize that we're all human? Yes. Does that it, make a difference? It takes practice. Okay. This is not something you just walk into and... Got I got it. it. I okay. got it. Okay. No. Okay. It, it does okay. take practice. Okay. And it takes some guts and go, okay, I'm going to do it. I'm going to walk up. I'm going to say, may I join you yes. and make this happen? Yes. That is so powerful. I am going to put that in my memory log. <laughs> may I join you? Because typically in groups, and it doesn't matter whether it's large gatherings or small, I like to, um, I like to work the room. I like to have a chance to yes. interface with everyone that is in attendance. And sometimes that takes a little bit of doing. Mm -hmm. Any recommendations? I recommend that if it's 50 people or below, okay. that you do that. Okay. If it's 50 people or above, mm -hmm. know in your mind the key people that you want to meet. Okay. Because there's a purpose for your going. You're not just going to a networking meeting or event mm -hmm. just to be going. You're not going because you were hungry, you wanted the food. Mm -hmm. You are going for a reason. So maybe you have two or three people in your mind on the way there, you're thinking in the car, I'm going to try and meet them tonight. Meet them first okay. and then work the room if it's 50 or above. Okay. Yes. So in your larger groups, you need to identify uh, before you arrive who is going to be your key yes. connection. What's your agenda? What's your agenda? I think a lot of people need to know mm -hmm. that, and that you don't go into these meetings without an agenda. No. And you study for a test. You do. You study you for do. a test. Well, I'm, you're going here to do something. Mm -hmm. You're going here to gain something. Business or maybe a job opportunity. Yes. So that's so what about this thing about handshakes versus hugs? <laughs> Come on now, because I'm a hugger. And, and sometimes, you know, I have to be careful about that. Well, think about this. You are in a different arena mm -hmm. than the corporate business person in a networking event. Yes. Okay? And I'll bet that if you had never met me before, didn't know who I was, and I offered, you would shake my hand. Absolutely. But, Absolutely. But you knew me today. We had spoke on yes. the phone. Oh, and yes. we oh, hugged. Yes. And, and that's it was, fine. It was a connect. It was that's a Some people, it really does bother. Huh. So in the corporate world, shake um, hands. Train, unless you know that person very, very well. Yes. Uh, shake hands and what about the shake hands because some people have let's talk about shaking <laughs> hands your handshake is very nice thank you it shows confidence and it shows um it just shows tremendous confidence in who you are well that's that's what you're aiming for you're aiming for the confidence and authority mm -hmm. and the person who initiates the handshake yes has that upper edge. 
Ah. Yes. Oh my goodness. So actually, if you are in that kind of setting, then it's a it's incumbent upon you to take the lead yes. and extend your hand first. How firm of a shake? You don't want the the handshake to bruise the other person's <laughs> hand. You don't okay. want blood dripping <laughs> from their <laughs> rings. <laughs> <laughs> That's why I'm looking at that gorgeous ring oh, you have. You. Definitely but, not. But <laughs> you know, that's why I tell people, please don't wear large rings on mm -hmm. your right hand because when you're shaking hands, how many times has someone shaken your hand and they've given you that death grip? Oh my. And you have a ring here and you can actually see the indentations. I have. Yes. Yes. And well, I won't wear jewelry on my hands. Period. Good for you. No, I, I just stopped because I had a very dear friend of mine who was a very well-known attorney, and his handshake was the grip of death. <laughs> it was the grip of death. Yes. And he would, so you know what I started doing, Leah, in public settings, when he would see me, hi, Michelle, and he would stick his hand out, and I would meet him, and I would <laughs> grip him as hard as I could. And I would say, good afternoon, Mr. Blank. And you know what? He said, man, that was a, a really intense handshake. And I'd say to him, not nearly as intense as yours. <laughs> and we both, <laughs> he stopped that with me. He stopped that. And I'm sure a lot of other people were very encouraged mm -hmm. that he got it. Because it was like an, a, a power shake or something, yes. but it was killing it, me. It is a power shake. Is that a power? Is it meant it, to intimidate, or what does that do? I don't even know if they know they're doing it, oh. but it, it is uh, the aggressive handshake. It is. It, it means that uh, it's the angry, aggressive handshake. Mm -hmm. And coming and, from an attorney. Yes, and an insecure one. Okay. Interesting. Yes. Uh, and insecure, but then you don't want a lamp handshake. No, you mean oh, uh -huh. the fingerella? Oh, oh, oh. <laughs> what? Who, 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 who are you? <laughs> what are you doing? What's this about? Okay, the, uh, I will tell you the one that drives me crazy. And when I started my business, mm -hmm. uh, I was at a chamber and. Uh, a, a chamber meeting mm -hmm. after hours and I set up a booth about this size and all of the business owners, and there were probably 200 yes. business owners came up to me and said, so this is a new business, what do you do? And they shook my hand. Okay. And this is what I got. Oh, no, no, no. They, they, mean that they didn't do me, a full shake. No, they just gave the little me finger. the early grab. They wouldn't let me go all, all the, way the way in. in. It's supposed right. to be web to web. Right, it is. Yes. So what do you do with that? You just let it go. You, I mean, you can't tell someone, I'm sorry, sorry you're giving me a right. handshake that's incorrect. Right. You can't do that. You right. just have to let it go. But that told me, wow, uh, I am going to be training a lot of shake business hands. people. Yes. These, are, these were owners and CEOs of companies. And management. And did not know. No. <laughs> now, is that perhaps something that is intuitive or when you teach people these kinds of skill sets, is it you're working under the assumption that they've probably never been taught or they've never thought about it? Because we're in college. Is that a part of the curriculum? Some colleges are putting it as part of the curriculum. Good. Some colleges are not. And I think that a lot of people just don't think what the power of business etiquette, and that falls into it, how important that is. And they're not mm -hmm. thinking about every aspect and how important that handshake is. Well, let's talk about um, casualness because with all of this reality-based uh, communication and social media mm -hmm. and tell it like you see it and show it like you mean it, um, I have seen casualness in areas that I found just completely 
and appropriate. Mm -hmm. And I'd just like for you to speak on that. Well, I, I will start with social media. Okay, let's start um, with social media. Facebook, Twitter, Facebook Pena. especially. Okay. Um, if you're a business person, yes. either you own a business or you're an employee of a business, yes. believe me, your boss is looking at your Facebook account. My clients are looking at my Facebook account. Mm. So I am very careful what I post there, mm -hmm. it's either family or business. Right. I, no. Um, I see a lot of, oh, let's chug the beer and it, what especially is that about? college students and I don't think they really do understand. I was with someone who was hiring and they said, you know, I really wanted to hire this one person, and I looked on their Facebook account, and I saw all of this alcohol activity, mm -hmm. and I'm not going to hire them now. Ha! Huh. So you have to be very careful, because people can get an idea about what they see. Well, sure they can. People it, hear it, with it, their yeah. eyes. Yeah, they, they those rolling... A scripts because I do have a Facebook account but it's mm -hmm. strictly business mm -hmm. and I don't discuss anything of a mm -hmm. personal nature uh, on that site just because I'm a public person that's right and I'm not really interested mm -hmm. in uh, dialoguing about things that are not business enhancing or, or things, image enhancing things that are negative oh well not Absolutely will not. Will not be but a part I of that. But I see it all the time. Mm -hmm. And when you're networking with someone, do you really want to network with a person that is talking about how they don't feel well, the food here isn't that great, look at the facility, do you what's the first thing you want to do? Run away? Oh, well, I do run away. I will not be around toxic people. And Leah. when you see that won't. on Facebook, mm -mm. it's the same thing. Yes. And I don't yeah. know if they understand that. Mm, if, that's a if, good point. But if you, you are in business, you're in the corporate world, be careful, be very weary of Facebook. Facebook can be fun. Yes, it can. And it, it can, can be great for your business, too. Yes. But you... There, there's a line. And I think that some college students and some young adults mm -hmm. cross that. Uh, so you have to be careful. Yes. Well, I know I had a conversation with uh, some younger people about that, and they just felt that I was, quote, old school. And my response was, uh, I don't mean to be in your business, but my generation is running this country right now. Mm -hmm. We are the CEOs. We are the people that are making the higher fire decisions. That's the baby boomers. And I said, and when we see that kind of stuff, we fall back into our thinking. Right. And, and there is zero tolerance for behavior of that nature. We just, right. I just, I don't think there's a whole lot of forgiveness mm -hmm. for people that are working for you or even interfacing with you, and um, they're showing their, their comments and the language and the, I'm like, are, are you serious? Are you serious? Serious? Yes. Really? Okay. Okay. That's yes. interesting. You say, what about some of the other mediums, like uh, Twitter and, and I mean, there's a Twitter, bunch. Twitter, I don't get into a lot because I'm too, I'm, I'm so busy. I don't. To, I, I don't do Twitter. LinkedIn, I think mm -hmm. if you are a business person and you're not on LinkedIn, get, get on, on LinkedIn. LinkedIn and fill it out. It is, it's a miracle. It is <laughs> a free website for you. It's a free website for you. So fill it out, treat it like that. Have a professional headshot. Ha, you thank know you. How, you know how I feel about that. I told you I yes. just had some professional yes. headshots done. Have a professional headshot. Yes. Don't just take something off of the internet that you we're in a photo of and it's blurry and maybe you're outside. Mm -hmm. Make sure you're wearing a suit. You never know who's going to be looking at that. Err on the side of formality. I would have to say so. 
I'm on LinkedIn. I haven't leveraged it as powerfully as I could or should, but I do know that the world of business is about business. Mm -hmm. And that, that's where all the business people are. They are always going to have some kind of presence, discussions, mm -hmm. entering in interesting interfaces. Yes. And I, I checked out your LinkedIn. Oh, did you? Yes. It looks okay. very nice. Thank very you nice. very much. Very informative. And if you are in business, uh, LinkedIn is a great way for you to start a LinkedIn group if you have your own company. Yes, I had yes. never thought about that. Yes. I really have I would not. love to see that, that could uh, happen. you have that a LinkedIn could. group and then you would have people join in on discussions. That would be very, then yeah. I have to have you on. Yeah. Because your, um, your background and um, experience is exactly where we are today. I absolutely believe that it is about outclassing the competition. What mm -hmm. about dress? Are we still into dress for success? <laughs> Are we Docker City? Because I'm telling you about these casual days. At the point I, I saw in the banking industry, uh, tellers and others uh, dressing in all kinds of attire. But as I tell folks, not in the hallowed chambers. Okay. Okay. You know, I call it not business casual. What is it? Business casualty. Ah. <laughs> <laughs> what has happened is I don't think people have a clear or businesses have a or give a clear picture what is business casual. So the minute they hear some employees hear the word casual, mm -hmm. oh, the flip-flops oh go God. on. I, I saw flip-flops in a bank. Mm -hmm. I died. Mm -hmm. I, I literally did. I, I had to do what, like a what? Yes. And um, it just really made me uncomfortable. Yes. Because banking is about and you need to look like you are handling money Yes. responsibly. Not that flip-flops mean you're not, but it was just a disconnect. Right, and you can still be in style, but still look professional. Okay. You don't have to wear a three-piece suit every day to a corporate. It just depends on where you work, mm -hmm. what interest, industry you're working in. Okay. The industry that you're working in right now, I would call this more of an artistic mm -hmm. industry. Yes, it is. So I wouldn't expect to see you in a suit every time you are here doing your show. Yes. No, you're, you're having a good time uh, with your clients and with the people that you're with. Uh, in my business, mm -hmm. I have to dress. Uh, oh, my in, goodness in, gracious, in yes. a professional mode. Mm -hmm. um, but I think that business casual has gotten out of hand. And I think that people need those guidelines and boundaries. And boundaries and what is and what is not business casual or business casualty. <laughs> I'd like to speak on a subject without offending a lot of women, and that is the issue of the low cut, which seems to be very fashion forward today, of the mm -hmm. very deep cut uh, frontage. And tight. And tight. <laughs> and pushed up like bustiers. And, and uh, is that? Is that where we're headed as a culture? And how does this work as we move into a global society? It is definitely not appropriate for the business arena. Okay. Whether it's business casual, casual, or your professional dress, it is not. So that's, I, that's really all I have to say about that. It's, <laughs> okay. it's pretty it's just not. cut and dry. Mm -hmm. um, the minute you start allowing that, then other things just go start out the window, popping yeah. out. Yeah. Oh yeah, <laughs> yeah. I I'm glad to hear you say that because that has been. Um, I guess I I I am a uh, conservative, in as much as I like everyone to feel comfortable, mm -hmm. and I don't like to create environments or even be a part of environments where everybody is not feeling comfortable. Mm -hmm. And when you start um, dresses too short, pants too tight, 
uh, areas of your body exposed, then you change the environment. Is that a fair assumption? Yes, and you will offend someone. You me. will offend You're someone. You're gonna offend me, Shell. <laughs> and women don't don't think it's cute either. Uh, I, I know they are, don't. Yeah, no, I no. know they don't. So. And once again, it depends on where you're working. If you're in the fashion industry, yeah, go that's a for whole it. Different, yeah, that's a whole different gamut. Yes. Um, if you're in the corporate world, please don't do it. Right. You know, you're hurting yourself. Well, let's talk about emails because that's a very integral part of business communication and protocol yes. today. Yes. Let's talk about email etiquette because I so enjoyed an article that you wrote on uh, successful emails. And, and I really, I, I, I've read everything uh, that I could read, and, and I'd like for you to just highlight email etiquette. Or netiquette, netiquette. as I call it. Okay. Email etiquette, what you want to do is keep it short. Okay. Keep it to a small paragraph. So many people, in the United States feel that they have to write a paragraph uh, of things that need to get done to the person in their office, okay. in their business. And what are you going to do when you get an email that, that is that long? What do you do with it? Well, I've, I speed read, so my you thing is, read? I really do. I well, speed read and, and it better be quick and cut to the chase. Because I got a ton of them. Mm -hmm. I mean, yes. 150 a day. Yes. That's just like, yeah. oh my God. Yeah. Yeah. That's a lot. That's and, a lot. And most people do get a lot of emails. But if you're going to get an email that's a list long, uh -huh. you're going to put it aside and you're going to deal with that later. Right. Because you don't want to deal with it now. You don't want to deal with it ever. But eventually you will read it. Mm -hmm. The way to get your email read quickly and efficiently is to make it to the point, quick and to the point, but not yelling at someone. Um, if I had emailed you, when does the show start, Leah? That's, no. No. It would be, dear Michelle. Okay. And end it with something, sincerely, Try to be professional, a little bit professional. Mm -hmm. I understand that some people are very, very, very busy. And sometimes those emails go back and forth, but really try. I hope you've had a great day. Thank right. you. Please and thank you. Please and thank you. Use I was encouraged to read that because I thought that was antiquated, but I always do say please and thank you yes. and sign off. Best regards, mm -hmm. kindest regards, mm -hmm. uh, Michelle. Yes. And then I'll put underneath title, but I always sell, put my, just Michelle. Yes. And leave it like that. But I was encouraged to read this. This yes. is good. It, please good and article. thank you. Good we'll, article. we'll get you a lot farther. <laughs> now, where can people get a reprint of this article? Can they come to your website? Is that how they would do it? Yes, they can go to my website, but I am a columnist for Dayton Most Metro. Okay. And it's called Getting the Edge on Etiquette. And people in other markets get that? All they have to do is type in DaytonMostMetro.com and it takes you there and uh, go under columnists, uh, under yes. Getting the Edge on Etiquette, and there it is. That's wonderful. Then that's what they need sure. to do. What is your website, by the way, for those who are watching? My website is uh, abiprotocol.com. Very okay, simple. simple. A B I protocol.com. Yes. Or they can always Google your name. Yes. And they're going to find lots of information about <laughs> you that will that will help. The emails were very this article was very impactful to me in terms of common courtesy, getting to the point and manners do mm -hmm. matter. Yes. They do set the, What do people do today that are job hunting and the communication is strictly email today? Meaning they don't even, uh, recruiters don't even talk to you by phone. So how do you establish a rapport with people that are strangers? 
you really try to, once again, I hope you're having a great day, and get, the, get to the meat. Okay. Quickly. Okay. But at the same time, I am a true believer in face-to-face -face meetings. I am too. So the quicker you can get to that, the better you're mm -hmm. going to be. Um, tell them that you would really like to see them face to face. Okay. Send them a personal note. Your note cards are so important yes. with your name and your business underneath. But maybe you're looking for a job, you won't have a business. It will mm -hmm. just have your name at the top and it's a note card. Send them, Something. thank you for uh, speaking to me via email. I would really love a one-on-one -on -one conversation with you best regards and your name I'm still a believer that a lot of business takes place in networking oh yes oh yes particularly for those who are looking for advancement mm -hmm. it does happen in those over food type events yes it does so uh, how do young people step into that? They're, they're newly graduated from college. Uh, they're trying to make inroads. How do they cross over into that, Leah? Well, whatever city that you're in, yes. there, is, there, are, there are networking events that people don't even know about. My and gosh. I, I will tell you that there are so, there's so much going on. Uh, you mm -hmm. have to do your research. Um, get to the Chamber of Commerce. That's the first place you should go and then branch out from there because they're going to know. Yes. They're going to know and they're going to direct you. Uh, I would add, that is extremely good advice. Yes. Deal with the Chambers. Yes. If Just you're looking to get into the corporate mm -hmm. arena. Get into the Chamber and then they will direct you mm -hmm. and show you and tell you about all of the other networking Venues. events mm -hmm. and net networking groups that there are. That would be awesome. Mm -hmm. I wonder if they have a special pricing for younger people who are basically out here that are not necessarily in business. I bet they do. I well, bet they, they might. I know uh, that they do have, say, here, I'm just uh, mm -hmm. Let's just say where I'm from. Mm -hmm. uh, there's something called Generation Dayton, and really? it's for people, for young business people, young okay. business owners. Yes, and it's a part of the chamber, but it is for the younger business owners. Mm -hmm. And if you know that, I mean, and it's very successful. Oh, I have to believe all that energy. Yes. yes. My goodness gracious. Oh, can you and imagine? Yes. I, I just. That's just. That's over the top. Yes, I uh, bet that's amazing. I've had the uh, occasion to speak for them, and they're wonderful. I know they are. Yeah, all that that youth and mm -hmm. and just positivity. Mm -hmm. That is so very very amazing. Well, let's shift for a minute. I want to talk about this issue of the international, because uh, as I share with people, I had the awakening of my life 12 years ago when I I went to mainland China and uh, for extended period and uh, was face to face with a very different culture mm -hmm. and um, I'd like for you to talk about what is happening with our global society. Well I think that we are doing business more and more with other cultures and that doesn't mean that we have to leave here and do business with other cultures overseas. Right here. There are, oh, there are <laughs> other cultures right here. Yes. That are working within a company and we're not acknowledging that. I think that some, some people may just think that everybody's equal, we're all the same. It's the United States, we're all Americans. Well, yes, we might be, but everybody has a culture and everybody has different cultures. Uh, even if you are from a certain state, their culture might be different than the Midwest or from Florida. What, how do they, mm -hmm. just small little things like that. But 
we have people from India here. Yes, large population. So you yeah. need to know just something small like if you're networking with someone and mm -hmm. he or she is from India and they shake your hand, that's how they shake your hand. But if you didn't know that, you'd think they might be being disrespectful or didn't know how to shake hands. Mm -hmm. That's how they've been taught. My goodness, so they don't have a firm grip. No. Um, but do they do web-to-web -web contact? Yes, they do, but it's Let very gentle. Yes, it's just, mm -hmm. yes, very gentle. Hmm. Someone from South America. Yes. I was networking with someone, and this was before, once again, I was into uh, the international protocol arena. And she was very close to me. Mm -hmm. So I kept stepping back, and she kept following oh me. Oh, my goodness. And so she was right here. Right. But I kept stepping back. Well, finally I stopped and then I, I thought to myself, Leah, she's from another culture. This is, to her, that was normal. Uh -huh. So I had to stop and say, she's not being rude and never step back from someone from another culture if they're getting close to you. What does that mean? It, it, that's just the, the way, way they, they are. deal. Okay. In the United States, we're about an arm's length away. Yes, yes. In Asia, say Japan, it might be three feet away. Because right. Because they're so close right. and tight. Right. In the UAE, mm -hmm. they're close. Uh, South America, they stand very close. Okay. Even so, if you're female, how does that work as a female? You, you like just, in the UA in the United Arab. That's just that's their culture. That's hmm. the way it is. Wow. And and if you're over there, you accept that. Now I never felt when I was over in the UAE that I felt invaded. Okay. But I knew what to expect. Okay. Yes. Yes, yeah, a very constricted culture. And it's important if you're doing business with other cultures or you're working with other mm -hmm. cultures to research and there are books that are important. Well you want to talk about that? Yes. Well first I wanted to give you this for having me on oh your my show. Goodness. I love gifts. When I do Dine Like a Diplomat, every person that is dining with me okay. gets the little book the of look etiquette. Of the, let, me, let me, could you all zoom ah. in on my little book? Camera people, there it is. And okay. that's, that's, it. that's all oh, about multicultural hmm. dining, international dining. Oh my goodness. Uh, the continental beer. style, yes. where the salad comes last. Yes, toasting and closing the meal. Yes. Ah, coffee course, coffee, coffee or demitasse may be served as a separate mm -hmm. course with chocolates or with the dessert. That is correct. Mm -hmm. I was truly not accustomed in Europe to drinking coffee with the food. It was a separate, mm -hmm. oh yes, separate piece entirely. Yes. And that That's, was good. Yeah. That was very, thank you so You're much. You're welcome. May I shake your hand? Of course, thank web you. to web. <laughs> <laughs> Wonderful, what else you got? Well, when I do trainings, and okay. I just think this is so informative. Um, the do's and taboos around the world, and this really is about gestures. Tell me <laughs> and about we talked that. about gestures. My goodness. Okay, well, a risky language or actions speak louder than words. Okay. Let me get this when, book close huh? up for people that want And I, did, I, I didn't write this no, book. No, 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 but is, it's still a good book. Let yes, me get it's a good book for people in. who want to do business okay, or who travel yeah, internationally. Here in the Dunes United and States. Taboos. Yes. Mm, by Roger Axtell, A-X-T-E-L-L, -L, yes. The Ultimate Guide to International Behavior. Yes. Yes. John Wiley and Sons are the pubs. Okay, I'll put that here. So... In the United States, this means okay. 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 Gotcha. Okay. Although they're doing this now with the little thumb. That's it's, fine. Okay. You know what? 
That means in Australia. What does that mean? Do you really want me to oh, say Oh, no, that? I don't want to know. <laughs> I don't want to know. Too much information. I don't want to know. I don't want to know. It, it <laughs> is an offensive term. So if ah. you're in Australia, and you this, this right here is not a good thing to do. Okay. So stay so away from So don't do that. any gestures. Is that well, basically? Well, you want to gesture with your full hand. Okay. Gesture with your full hand. This in France mm -hmm. means zero. Z well, that's it what means it means. means nothing. Yeah. It means like what zippity is... doo dah. Nothing. Right. In Brazil, mm -hmm. uh, not Brazil. In um, Belgium, yes. This is an offensive term. This is an offensive hand gesture. Ah. So be very careful. And in a lot of countries, pointing. Yes. Is not and beckoning. Beckoning. No. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So, gesturing with your full hand is probably the safe way to go unless you are extremely learned. I just say research, research, research. Right. Well, know I the books to research in and and read them. Good. Where are there you're any going. other books? Oh, well. Because time is moving. Oh, quickly. is it really? Yes, it is. Oh, my, my gosh. I know. I told you I got to have you back. I told you <laughs> that going in. This was not going to work. This is fabulous. Kiss, Kiss bow, bow, or, or shake, shake hands, hands. and um, let me get when, a close up of that one. There I, it is. I am Kiss, I'm a government shape. contractor for the Defense Acquisition University okay. Senior Service College Fellowship. They all get a copy of this. It is it tells about 60 different countries in this one book. So, it's could be your bible well, if it, you're a traveler. Yes. And then the deputy director for the Protocol School of Washington wrote this book, Honor and Respect, and it truly is the official, the official okay. guide to names, titles, and forms of address. And once again, that sits on my desk. If This is awesome. If you don't know what to call a lieutenant colonel, mm -hmm. this will, tell, will you tell you how to write a letter to them mm -hmm. because you don't call them face to face, Lieutenant Colonel, you call him Colonel. Ha. Ah. Well, you know I shared with you before coming on air my angst at the casualness of uh, authorship uh, in, with regard to the reference of, of our president and the fact yes. that the uh, that people have um, not understanding the global mm -hmm. interpretation of that casualness of such a powerful office, whether you like the person occupying it or not, is irrelevant. It is the office, and yet we refer to them by their no, no, just by their last name. Yes. And not even with a mister, just the name. Yes. And the wife is referred to by the first name. Yes. Is that proper protocol? No, whether you agree with their politics or not, right. they are still our commander in chief. Yes, military, yes. military, important. So <laughs> it is Sir or Mr. President, it is Mrs. Obama. Yes, period. Period. It's, it's a form of respect. Mm -hmm. And um, I, I believe in that. Uh, you, never know who you're speaking with and maybe that person uh, doesn't have the same beliefs that you believe in so right. stay away from politics and religion and if you are going to talk politics or you are going to use the president's name you better use it correctly correctly yes that that is I am so glad to have you speak on that because that I find so disturbing because we do not understand that people in other countries are watching us 24-7. Mm -hmm. yes. In China, they watch all of our television stations, they watch all of our newsprint, they watch all of our news uh, televised, movies, everything. That was mm -hmm. the shock for me, yes. which was they get to see everything, reality TV, and do you really <laughs> want, I mean seriously, I, I watch Jerry Springer um, <laughs> in China. And I was like, oh my God.
<laughs> and they say, yo, yo, people, Jerry Spring. I was like, oh, no, no, no. Oh, no, it's screensaver. <laughs> screensaver. That, it's, it's not, it's not, that's, not, that's not real. But we forget <laughs> with the globalization of information and technology, mm -hmm. we have to be very aware at all times that there are a couple of billion people that have access to our uh, way of life. Yes. And it's subject to interpretation through their cultural filter. Right. And so that's my two cent on all of this, that Americans need to be mature and aware that protocol is important yes, for establishing is. a level playing field and that we have to learn and embrace a variety of cultural um, conversations. Is that how you would like to conclude today? Yes, I, I, I would like to say that uh, business uh, protocol uh, and social intelligence, business image, it all plays a part in where you are as far as your success level. Um, you will be more successful, you will be more confident if you do the research, if you know the protocol intelligence for our country mm -hmm. and the other countries that you're dealing with. That is so important. It's, it's a matter of respect. And viewers, hmm, <laughs> on that note, it's a matter of respect. Something that we probably need to revisit as an operating principle in our culture. Being an American does not mean that a person thinks and views situations from your cultural perspective. And I would encourage you to uh, learn more about this, to begin to apply it in your own lives, and to think about uh, Ms. Hawthorne's uh, thoughts today. I am going to have her back on <laughs> in the future because we want to talk about eating. Oh yeah, eating. I mean, there are people now in our culture that do not know how to use forks and knives because they've eaten hamburgers all their lives. That's a problem. So I'm going to have her back just for your one up. Just keep, keep watching. And as we conclude today's segment of The Power of Money, I hope you've enjoyed it. She's been a fascinating guest. I'm Michelle Graves, wishing you as always an awesome and tremendous day. And God bless you. See you next time. Take care.